I gotta step out. It's been a blast. I'm, I'm so happy to be sharing this, these points of view with you. And um, you know, the, just the power of the design. I mean, how amazing are, are, are those clouds floating? And uh, oh, I, I have to, I have to make a parenthesis there. That's the power of, of um, the magic of God. That's the power of Maya. Maya does not mean illusion. That's a mistranslation that was performed by the colonialists. Um, you know, be it Germans, be it French, be it British. Uh, they conspired to mistranslate a bunch of the Sanskrit. And, and so if, if you have a good understanding of the basic Sanskrit, um, I, I don't claim to be a Sanskrit scholar, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm studying it very hard, very attentively, and I've been exposed to it around it for over 30 years. And I'm still learning every day. It's, it's so complex. It's like learning 10 or 20 languages. Uh, but anyway, um, Maya does not mean, I'll do a video on Maya, but Maya does not mean illusion. It means magic. That's actually the root of the word Maya, magic. And Ya is referring to the third person in the masculine be it possessive or not, usually in reference to God. Ma, Ma is, is a very interesting syllable. Again, I'll do a full video on that. But Ma is um, uh, the feminine, the divine feminine. It also means possessive in the first person. Um, it also means water. It also means mother, mother in every single language Spanish. in the world. In, in Spanish, in English, in French, in German, in Chinese, Mandarin, every language, and Sanskrit. So when um, the, the, the Vedic scriptures, the Bhagavad Gita and all these scriptures say, refer to Maya, they're not, the mistranslations, uh, the BS mistranslations are going to tell you, oh, it's illusory, it's an illusory world. And that's completely wrong and misleading. And so if you go with that translation, then you're going to have a certain view of the world. Oh, it's an illusion. No, it's not an illusion. Although it may be, but that's not what the scripture is telling you. The scriptures are telling you, it's magical. We live in a magical world. It's the magic of God. That's what Maya means. It's mine of His. Mine of God. So it's talking about God's own, God's possessive, God's power right mine his that's what it means literally so it, it's got so many different nuances in there but um the power of god is what creates everything around us including those clouds and them being able to float with millions of pounds of water in the air like it was nothing that's not an illusion or a delusion that's being caused by the uh, Luciferian mind control of Kali or of Kali and, and his minions and uh, the Asuras and the demon worshippers that's an illusion that's caused by God himself a magical spell a God spell that's caused by God himself <laughs> I think I've cleared the space around us with my railing sorry look everybody's gone <laughs> like 30 feet away from us not 100 feet anyway um so there's some things that are like most things are beyond the control of these so-called elites which are scumbags i mean they have their mind control they have their black magic they have their demon spells they have their you know mk ultra they have their mind control they have all that bs which works wonders for them right it's, it's not good it's nothing good it's evil it works on a large percentage of the population uh, because they're susceptible to it. We're, we're susceptible to it. But you start becoming uh, increasingly immune to it when, when you start getting exposed to the truth. So that's where Christ comes in and he tells you the truth shall set you free. Because it starts inoculating you against their BS. But on the flip side of that, there's a much deeper, more profound ancient magic that's the magic of God and that's the one that's not allowing you to see the water the millions of pounds of water flowing floating above your head that's not the Luciferian Kali Asura worshippers that's God's magic that's why even it's even more powerful so 
that's why it's even harder to, to grasp at because God's magic spells work on everybody. They even work on the devil. And he, he says it over and over again in the Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam. There's also passages in the Bible that refer to it. Like even the demons, even the angels, even all the higher beings, the devas, the asuras, uh, the demigods, all of that um, ecosystem. Uh, us humans, of course, and animals, plant life, all, all kinds of beings, they all fall under the spell of the divine, of the absolute. So even, even uh, like nobody's immune to the power of the divine. So he's just completely so powerful that he will cast you know, his power, his spells on top of uh, everybody, you know, but uh, through his mercy and through you stepping one, one inch closer to him and he then he does the same, he starts revealing himself to you because you first have to purify your perception and your soul to be able to, you know, I'm one to talk, right? I'm, I'm, I'm like... I'm a complete sinner and a complete, you know, all the things you want to say, you know, I'm like, I'm not claiming I'm some guy that's better than anybody. I'm just, you know, sharing thoughts here with you and the things that God's revealing to me and that he's telling me that I need, I like, he's compelling me to share them. Not just with my friends and family, which I do every day. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> until they're fed up with it, but <laughs> they keep asking for more. So uh, I need to share it with, with you guys as well, a larger audience, so that you may as well, you know, if you like it, if you think it's got uh, some interesting stuff behind it, uh, and you can share it and uh, pass it along and, and just make the world a better place in the sense that we're, where we have to you know it like god tells you that you have to put in the work for certain things like he'll do most of the work actually look at the sun you know look at the sun who's paying for the sun did you turn on the sun this morning did somebody turn on the, the ocean waves this morning no the, god's doing that for free he keeps telling us like he's, he does that like for free for, with for a limited uh, like amount of like very tiny fraction of his infinite power he sustains the whole world and all the living things in it and uh what do we do in return <laughs> is he getting his investment out of it <laughs> more i don't know more likely than not i mean is he ask yourself like is he getting your his investment if you look at it from an energy or a business and, and investment point of view is he getting his money's worth like he doesn't deal in money right but is he getting his energy investment dedication out of it are you giving it back to him with your faith and your devotion and your admiration and your adoration or are you stuck on your freaking phone watching tv gossiping again i'm one to talk right I'm guilty of all these things myself, as we all are. But uh, just sharing thoughts with you guys. Um, gratitude is one of the highest virtues that God likes. He loves it. Humility, devotion to Him, and, and gratitude are like... He loves them. Uh, again, um, it, it keeps repeating that in all the scriptures, all the holy scriptures. And, you know, you know what he doesn't like. I don't have to tell you. Beautiful. Look at those. Fractal patterns on the waves. Enough. Guys, it's been my pleasure. See you soon. Bye.